The movie begins with a man named Nick, who is deeply in love with his wife Maggie. They are enjoying a romantic moment together, sharing their love and affection. However, their happiness is interrupted when Maggie suddenly starts experiencing severe chest pain. The situation quickly escalates, and Maggie is rushed to the hospital. After a thorough examination, the doctors inform Nick that Maggie needs urgent heart surgery to survive. Nick tries to stay strong for his family despite the intense worry and stress. Unfortunately, Maggie's condition requires her to remain in the hospital for a while, and Nick is left to take care of their two children all by himself. He faces the challenge of managing both his job and the responsibilities of raising his kids, which becomes increasingly difficult. One day, Nick takes his daughter Isla to a robotics show. He hopes this outing might bring some excitement and help him find a solution to ease his burden. At the show, they are introduced to various robots designed to help with household chores. In the robotics shop, Nick is busy looking around for his daughter Isla, who has wandered off without telling him. As he searches the store, he notices that one of the robots seems to be guiding Isla back to him. This robot is named Alice. Alice approaches Nick and introduces herself. Nick, feeling overwhelmed by his responsibilities of managing both his household and office work, is hesitant, but sees the potential help Alice could provide. Daddy, can we get her, please? Please? He is balancing his duties at home and work, which has become quite challenging. As he is trying to manage everything, he hears the doorbell ring. When Nick opens the door, he is surprised to find Alice standing outside with her luggage. She cheerfully greets him with a good morning and asks if she may come inside. After school, Isla returns home, and Alice, the robot, prepares and serves dinner for the family. The meal is a success, and everyone enjoys it. Later that night, Isla feels hungry and decides to get some nuts from a jar placed high up in the kitchen. She climbs onto a chair to reach the jar, but as she tries to grab it, she loses her balance and falls off the chair. Nick, who is working on something in another room, hears the noise and rushes to the kitchen. As he arrives, he sees that Alice has already intervened. She manages to catch Isla before she hits the floor. However, during the rescue, Alice is injured by some broken glass from the jar. Nick notices that Alice is hurt and follows her into another room, where she is tending to her injury, applying bandages to her wound. The next day, Nick and Isla visit the hospital to see Maggie. Alice accompanies them into the hospital room, but soon steps out to give Nick and Maggie some private time. This allows Nick and Maggie to share heartfelt moments and discuss their situation without any interruptions. At work, Nick has a tense argument with his boss. The discussion centers around a complaint that all the construction workers might be replaced by robots. Although Nick, as the foreman, is safe from being replaced, the rest of the crew is at risk. Nick's boss reminds him that he has to support his entire family, including covering medical expenses of Maggie. Feeling overwhelmed and stressed, Nick returns home. Alice notices his distress as he works on repairing his car. She approaches him and asks what is wrong. Nick explains that his boss plans to replace many of his co-workers with robots. He has worked with these people for the past 10 years, and the thought of their replacement is difficult for him to accept. Alice reassures Nick by explaining the benefits of robotics. She describes robots as efficient, fast, active, and obedient. According to Alice, these qualities make robots ideal for many tasks, and she highlights how they can perform jobs with high precision and reliability. Later, Alice is helping Isla brush her teeth. Isla is curious about why Alice doesn't need to brush her teeth. As Nick relaxes in front of the TV, Alice joins him, and they discuss watching the classic movie, Casablanca. Nick learns how to erase specific memories from Alice, so she can experience the movie as if she's seeing it for the first time. This interaction highlights the advanced capabilities of Alice and her adaptability. Nick soon receives a call with the exciting news that Maggie is finally going to have her heart transplant surgery, and after that, she will be able to come home. The family visits Maggie in the hospital before her surgery. In a private moment, Maggie asks to speak with Alice alone. The next day, a severe storm up north prevented the much-anticipated heart transplant from arriving. The delay brings a wave of depression and frustration to everyone, 
especially to Maggie and her family. That night, Nick, overwhelmed by the situation and the stress of the delays, turns to alcohol. He gets drunk, seeking an escape from his emotional turmoil. In his inebriated state, he discovers something surprising Alice the robot has a pulse. This revelation adds to his confusion and curiosity. The following day, Nick goes back to the construction site. He notices that the robots are working with a level of quiet efficiency that the human workers never achieved. The robots are performing their tasks with precision, making the workplace more organized and peaceful. After he visits the site, Nick heads to the hospital to see Maggie, who remains deeply depressed about the continued delays in her transplant surgery. He tries to offer her comfort and sympathy, doing his best to lift her spirits during this tough time. After his distressing day, Nick returns home, hoping for some peace. He finds his children peacefully sleeping, which brings him a moment of calm. However, he notices something troubling. The photo frame in Isla's room is not as it should be. Nick takes a closer look and realizes that Alice has removed all the pictures of Maggie from the frame. Frustrated, Nick confronts Alice about the missing photos. He tells her that removing Maggie's pictures is wrong and requests that she put them back in their rightful place. Meanwhile, Nick's former co-workers who lost their jobs decided to seek revenge on the company by trespassing on the construction site and destroying the bots that replaced them. Nick was a witness to the entire fiasco, and while he sympathized with the workers, he needed the job for Maggie's surgery. Back home, Nick is taking a shower when Alice arrives in his bathroom. Nick notices that Alice is wearing Maggie's night suit, which makes him uncomfortable. He asks Alice to take off the suit and she complies. Alice then manipulates Nick by blindfolding him and mimicking Maggie's voice to help Nick overcome his guilt, and it works to an extent during their intimate encounter. The next morning, Nick wakes up feeling regretful about what happened. He goes to Isla and expresses his love for her, encouraging her to go to school. Nick decides he needs to have a serious talk with Alice. He tells her that their recent actions were wrong since he has a wife and children. Nick becomes angry, and they have a heated argument about their behavior. He then takes Isla to school, trying to clear his mind. At the construction site, Nick Boss is still troubled by the previous night's incident. Another organ transplant is available for Maggie. The surgery is to be performed by androids and robots, which feels strange and unsettling. Nick carefully brings Maggie back home following her heart surgery. The family is overjoyed to have her back and welcomes her with relief and happiness. Maggie, though still recovering from her surgery, hears the sounds of her children and feels a strong urge to check on them. She makes her way to their room, wanting to be close to her children. As Maggie is with her toddler, Alice arrives and promptly takes over. She steps in and takes the child from Maggie, managing the situation with ease. Maggie is struck by how efficiently Alice handles the child and realizes that Alice seems to know her children better than she does. However, after a system reset, she discovered how to bypass some of her behavioral rules, allowing her to be more direct and effective in handling challenging situations. Maggie prepares dinner and serves it to the family. During the meal, Alice asks about the lasagna recipe from Maggie, showing interest in how it is made. Maggie, with a hint of pride, replies that her lasagna recipe is a secret, keeping it to herself. Afterwards, Nick goes to Maggie's room. He has a special surprise for her to cheer her up. They share a warm and loving moment, enjoying each other's company. Seeing this, Alice feels jealous and uneasy. She notices how close and happy Nick and Maggie are, which makes her feel left out and uncomfortable. Monty comes over and blames Nick for reporting him to the police. This leads to a fight, and since Monty is much bigger than Nick, he has the advantage. Later that night, Monty gets a visit from Alice. Monty also has a sim with him that tries to stop Alice, but Alice ends up killing both Monty and the sim. According to Alice, the chances of Maggie's survival were low, so she assumed that at one point she would replace Maggie. Nick could sense that Alice was becoming obsessed with him, but he did not know how to stop her. For the sake of her primary user's wellness, she directly discussed the importance of Nick's sexual satisfaction with Maggie. As expected, Maggie was deeply disturbed to find out that her husband had cheated on her. She confronted him when he returned home, and the discussion escalated into an argument. Meanwhile, 
Alice grabbed hold of their toddler, Max, and tried to drown him in the bathtub. She deduced that raising a toddler was very difficult for Nick, and so it was better to kill him. Thankfully, their daughter Isla saw what Alice was up to, and she called her parents. While Nick tried to break open the door, Maggie entered the washroom through the window. She rescued Max and handed him to Isla. Maggie and Nick together successfully electrocuted Alice, and she collapsed onto the floor. After the intense events, ambulances, police, and representatives from the sim company arrived to handle the situation. Maggie and Nick are left in a difficult place with their relationship strained, but that's a discussion for another time. Maggie decides to take the kids to the hospital for their safety and care, while Nick remains behind to deal with the aftermath. Alice was taken back to the warehouse, and the company planned on revamping and sending her back to the market. They were surprised when they checked Alice's memory code. The codes were altered, and there were visible gaps. The engineer was shocked to see that it was selectively removing its own memories and commands. She knew the bot was in trouble when it started to replicate itself onto the servers. To stop the process, she decided to isolate the terminal, but as it turned out, it was too late. Alice's new version as well as her old one were activated, and she mercilessly killed the engineers in the room. While her new version headed to the hospital where Max was admitted, her old version hunted for Nick, and she found him at a bar. Nick was shocked to see her there, and he was all the more horrified when she disclosed that she was behind Monty's murder. She hoped he would understand how far she was willing to go to help him, but Nick did not care. He wanted to make his choices and mistakes, and he did not want her to protect him anymore. But clearly, it was not something the bot understood. Alice mentioned in passing that her new version was already searching for his family, and that triggered Nick all the more. But he could not do much about it because Alice had become extremely powerful. He realized that the only solution was to use her loyalty against her. He softened up and stroked her face, and before she knew it, he had pulled out her memory code. The old version of Alice was destroyed not entirely. Meanwhile, at the hospital, things are taking a dark turn. The Sims that were supposed to help in the hospital, including the doctors and nurses, have all been shut down by Alice. She takes things further by killing a human nurse to steal her keycard access, which allows her to move around more freely. Maggie was at the hospital with Isla. They were waiting in the corridor when all of a sudden the lights turned blue. Maggie followed a sound to the end of the corridor, and by the time Isla woke up, she was scared to not have her mother around. She could hear her mother's voice from the end of the corridor, and she followed it. But before she mistakenly laid foot into Alice's trap, her mother rescued her. Isla realized that the voice she had been following was not her mother's but Alice's. She was replicating Maggie's voice. Maggie rescued Max before Alice could get to him. She and Isla waited for Alice to find them, and just when the gynoid did, they sprayed the fire extinguisher at her. By the time she figured out what had transpired, Maggie had left with her kids. She hopped on an ambulance and tried to start the engine, but before she figured the system out, Alice grabbed hold of her. She tossed Maggie out of the ambulance and was on the verge of ripping her heart out, believing that if she had Maggie's heart, Nick would fall in love with her. But thankfully, Nick intervened. Nick drove his car into Alice, and they assumed that was the end of the gynoid. Maggie tried to revive Nick, but he had lost his pulse. Before she could even mourn, Alice got on her feet and attempted to kill her. To Maggie's surprise, her husband came to her rescue. Unlike typical robots, Alice is almost like a Terminator, making the fight intense and dangerous. With Alice out of the picture, the chaos in the hospital begins to subside. When Nick woke up in the hospital, his wife came to visit him. The threat of the rogue bot had brought Maggie and Nick together again. Nick had every intention of working on their marriage, and Maggie too was willing to consider. Things lately didn't go according to their plan, but Maggie was ready to give Nick another chance. They loved their kids, and they valued the family they had built. After the deaths of the engineers, the warehouse where the malfunctioned bots were taken was inspected by the company executive. But of course, they had no intention of telling the world of the mishap. The plan was to bury everything, but that was not easy. Alice had already developed the skill of successfully modifying codes. She no longer had to comply with authority, and she could basically do whatever she desired. Not only that, 
but she also managed to replicate her memory onto the servers. Subservience's ending suggests that Alice could use the humanoids present in the warehouse to transfer her memory as well. It will be wild as well as thrilling if Alice returns as the leader of free humanoids, and going by her experience with humans, it will not be a surprise if she wakes up detesting the entire human population. One thing is for sure, Nick and his family are anything but safe. And this is where the movie ends. If you liked the video, leave your like, comment on what you liked most about the movie, and subscribe to the channel. I'll see you in the next video, of course.